welcome back to the kitchen counter. Um, it looks a little bit chaotic, but I thought I'd show you something that I do um, with my art for um, everyday purposes. Now, I am a vapor, and as an aside interest, I make inlaid um, decorative panels for electronic cigarette devices. So I thought while I was doing some, I would show you the process. It's using a different type of resin and I'll show you how I pour that. Now in front of you, you have a lot of different things and um, decorative bits of paintwork that I've done that I will use as the base of my panels. All of it is on Yuppo and there are a few grades of Yuppo that I use. This one's quite sturdy and strong. This is a thicker Yuppo. It actually comes from a diver's notebook. Okay. And this is a, a thinner, more flexible sheet. Now to prepare this for acrylic paint, I use Kmar varnish and I just do a quick spritz and that just primes my yuppo so the paint just doesn't slip straight off. I've used a, a lot of different techniques. I've used making cells, I've used um, making little um, swirls, I've used blowing paint around, I've used um, a bowl flip and a dirty pour and all of this is designed to give me different designs. Now when you do um, panels you're only looking for something this big so I'm looking for interest in the design. Now although I do these as decorative panels for um, electronic cigarettes you can use this method for any sort of inlay that you want. This is what I'm looking to do. This is a blank panel. It is a metal base with a little lip. Now I could pour resin, uh, a design straight into that, um, but I find it's a little bit easier to make panels and it's a little bit safer <laughs> because you only get one shot if you pour it directly into those. Now here's some that I've done previously. It started off as a standard carbon fibre sheet and I made a panel and a button to make this a little bit prettier. Okay, so the process is, is quite simple. I make some templates from these panels. I use this to find the place that I can get some nice panels from front and back. They are then cut out um, these are blanks and these are some that I've cut out this morning that I will be showing you how to resin. Very pretty colours. I use 3M adhesive sticky um, double-sided sheets and I attach them to the back like this. Now these are blanks um, but I've cut them out of the actual design. And then I use a doming resin to make a lovely pillow top edge on these and these will just adhere straight in there. They will click onto that with a magnet and that will be your end design. Same with this one. That's another pretty one that I cut out of this sheet. It will adhere to that base. And that that's what the front will look like. Okay, so we've already cut some out of 
this sheet, which will be this pair. And this one was a really pretty one and I've kept some so that I can make another panel out of these wispy bits. So let me clear all these up. And um, I'll show you how I pour them. The resin that I'll be using is um, Craftsmart Glass Coat. It's a two-part epoxy resin and you use one part A to one part B. Now this is a very high viscosity resin. It will hold together and form a dome or that pillow top edge. Whereas if you get a low viscosity resin it will just run straight off and you'll only get a thin covering. These will be handled on a regular basis so it's important that you let these harden properly before you start using them otherwise you will disturb and soften the resin as you go. Okay, let's take it to the next stage and mix some resin. Okay, let's start some mixing. Now these are really tiny so you don't need very much resin. I'm going to double glove the same way I normally do. Now for those of you that ask me, the reason I double glove is that I like these gloves but they're much too big and they get in the way. I don't like the feel of these on my skin, they get a bit sticky but they, they fit. So that way I've got proper use of my fingers without getting any skin irritation from the glove. Now I know from past experience that I only need about 60 mils of resin to do two lots of panels and that gives me just a little bit of extra to play with. So we'll start with part A and I'm going to put 30 grams in. And 30 grams of my part B. Now it's important that you get this correct. You can use visual um, determination by pouring it in separate cups. And one of, the, one of the neat tricks I found online was if you have a look at your bottles, once you've started pouring, you can see that they're at the same level. So you're keeping track of using the right amount. Now this gets stirred for about three minutes and I'll put my timer on. and I'll start stirring. Now this is very thick resin okay so this is make sure you take everything off the sides make sure it's mixed thoroughly it's a shame to to go to so much trouble to make the designs on the panels and um, then to mess it up because your resin isn't mixed properly Now this is, this is quite a delicate laying down of resin rather than just pouring it willy nilly on, on things. You want to use enough that it holds itself and gives you that nice pillow top. But you also um, don't want too much because if it falls over it will drag the rest of the resin with it. Now because I'm using Yapo, which is actually a little bit um, flexible, you need to make sure that things are very flat. Um, when you cut your design out, that you don't fur the edges downwards, you need clean cuts, otherwise your, your resin will um, 
spill over on one particular side and drag the whole thing off which you know voice of experience I've done that um, I used to um, trim the edges a little bit ragged and um, it affects your end result now I'm trying not to introduce too many bubbles by dragging a flat um, tongue depressor through this and just for those of you um, make sure you, you take appropriate safety precautions my windows are wide open I have my exhaust fan on in the background I won't be torching a lot of this and um, I'm making sure that that I keep track of the time. Um, I don't want the resin to cure too quickly. And there's my timer. All right, so uh, let's start pouring. I'll just make sure that you've got a good view of that. Now I'm not going to pour directly. I'm going to use the, the tongue depressor to just drizzle out to the edges and in a square. This way I have a better control over where it goes. Now I'll just let that sit for a while and do the next one. Now this yuppa paper is flimsy so it needs to be supported and you can't be too rough with it, see, otherwise it will fall off these little muffin cups. Now I use muffin cups um, because they're slightly um, sticky, not, not sticky but the, the yuppo doesn't seem to slip as much on these as they would if I used like a little, the upside down cup. Now I'm just pulling that to the edge and of course um, if this is a bit tedious for you then fast forward. There's a little bit outstanding over this corner. So I'm just moving it to get a nice edge. Now the tricky one with the hole. If you're careful, and you need to be, um, it will stay in a nice sloping level down to that hole. Again, I'm being very delicate with this, but it is a, a property of this particular resin that leaves you this lovely pillow top edge. And so I'm using that to my advantage by running around the edge without actually letting it fall through. Now, like I said, you can use these for anything, for, for boxes, for any inlay that you want. You can use this for jewellery. Lots of people make pendants this way. And this is all down to the, the wonderful properties of this sort of resin. It's designed to do this. Hold itself. in this lovely edge.
Oops, that was a bit much. I'll just drag that around here. For a long time I was quite um, nervous of using resin. Um, it appeared so dangerous and so messy. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have said to me um, that I'm quite calm about using it. I think that comes from practice. Um, resin is, is like any material, once you you start to use it, you start to understand how it behaves, how long you've got and um, you know it's, it's a wonderful thing, you can be used for so many different purposes and the key is to, to getting the right resin for the job that you want. This particular resin would, would be absolutely luxurious on a, a larger piece of artwork but it's very expensive and it goes on very thick and it takes a long time to dry on, on a piece of artwork. Your substrate has to be perfectly level otherwise it will just pull itself away to a corner and you won't know about it until you, you see it the next day where you've got a big pile of it in one corner because it doesn't give you any clues, it doesn't flow off the outside and um, tell you that your substrate's not level. Now I'm still being extremely cautious around this hole. This becomes where the, the finger sits and any rough edges will be very obvious so I am being very conser controlled and conservative around the hole and I'll just fix that edge now it has a tendency to round off the corners so you do need to take it back out to square corners if that's what you've, you're working on. This one's the same. That's a lovely coverage. Okay, see we, we've still got lots of resin left over and I've probably, out of that 60 um, mils worth of resin, I've got enough to do another set of panels. But I'd much prefer to overmix than undermix. Okay, now let me just see how thick things are. And I'll, a quick torch of the initial bubbles and I'll show you what it looks like. And then um, tomorrow I'll show you what it looks like dry. Now Yapo being a synthetic or plastic paper um, will melt if you get too aggressive with your torching. So um, be delicate and give yourself some, some time to, to get these. You will need to watch this. I'll cover this and um, torch the bubbles every so often. 
but let's have a closer look. Okay, so these are the, the panels coated. Now, I'll just show you the, the edge. See that beautiful pillow top? Beautiful resin. The shine. Just gorgeous. Now, I haven't got this too thin, uh, sorry, too thick, but you can go a little bit higher and build it up. It's not necessary for what I'm doing, but um, they're just beautiful. Okay, and I'll bring you back tomorrow and show you what they look like dry. Okay, so they've dried. Um, they won't cure for a, properly for another few days. But they turned out really pretty. You can see the pillow top and the colours just pop. Very happy.